There have been a lot of significant season-ending injuries in fall camps across college football, and the Big Ten was not able to avoid said season-ending injury bug. Nebraska and Illinois were the culprits. Can they backfill these roles in time? Can they fill these impact spots in time by the time the 2024 season kicks off here in just a couple of weeks? From L.A. to Piscataway, all Big Ten, all year long. This is Big Ten Ten. Man, it's now just setting in. I just said there in that open in just a couple of weeks when referring to the kickoff of the 2024 season. Man, that, that's got me excited. That's got me ready to go. Let's strap it up. Summer has been wished away. Let's talk some football. Let's talk first about the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Man, you got to feel for Teddy Porosca right now. Holy cow. This was a four-star recruit coming in three out of the last four years. He has suffered a season-ending injury. He has torn his left ACL once, and now he has tore his right ACL twice. He tore it recently last week, I should say, in a one-on-one -on -one drill in practice for Nebraska. Now, you look at Teddy, and just this injury history just, just makes you feel for the kid. There was a good amount of anticipation for his arrival when he did come in. He was a Scott Frost recruit. Matt Rule was able to retain him, and on paper— this is somebody that you should be able to have as one of your building blocks of your offensive line. Six foot 10, 315 pounds, an absolute, an absolute mammoth of a man in there. Now you look at Teddy and what he's been able to do as of late. He played in 10 games last season. He started actually the last five at left tackle. So it ended on a good note. Nebraska was hoping that he could carry that momentum to be that blindside blocker for Dylan Raiola this season. More on that here in just a minute. He started the first three games in 2022 before an injury to his right knee ended his season that year. In 2021, he played in five games before tearing the ACL in his left knee. All right, so let's move beyond Teddy and let's talk about what this means for Nebraska's offensive line and for this offense, when you look at the Nebraska offense as a whole here for the last, let's call it three to four years, the offensive line has been a big question mark. It has not lived up to the high standards that exist at the University of Nebraska. And when you look at an immediate replacement for Teddy at left tackle, Nebraska fans, I can kind of hear them kind of squirmishing right now. You're going to Turner Corcoran, right? That is the right here, right now type of replacement over there. Now, you look at Turner. He started the first seven games last season at left tackle before suffering a season-ending injury. In 2022, he started every game, the first three at left guard, and then the final nine at left tackle. In 2021, he started nine games at left tackle. So he started a lot of spots. He started a lot of games at that left tackle spot. He's seen a lot of time but he's been plagued by inconsistent play. He really hasn't lived up to those four-star type of standards that he had when he came onto campus in Lincoln uh, just a few years ago. He was another four-star offensive line recruit. It's put up or shut up time for Turner Corcoran, right? We talked about the issues that have maybe plagued him throughout his college career. Now he's going to be the guy that is dependent to protect the blind side of Dylan Raiola. You have this diamond, you have this treasure, you need some protection, you need some insurance, right, on this diamond that you were able to mine and get to come to Lincoln, Nebraska. Turner Corcoran, is he the guy to be able to protect Dylan Raiola on a consistent basis? What we've seen from Turner, I'm not so sure, right? But maybe now is the time for him to step into that role and where he can finally progress, where he can finally develop into that guy that Nebraska can lean on. That is a big time question mark. Now, I look at the rest of the offensive line. I feel really good about Bryce Benhart at right tackle. I feel pretty good about the interior. Ben Scott returns at center. Uh, Micah Mazuka comes in. He has power four experience at both Baylor and Florida. I feel pretty good about him. But I think what this injury for Teddy Prohaska and then moving Turner Corcoran over to left tackle, I think what it does is it makes this Nebraska offensive line a lot thinner, right? When you had Turner and others on that second team, you felt decent about the depth for Nebraska up front. Now you move Turner 
up to left tackle. And now all of a sudden, if one or two of those guys on that current starting five minus Teddy goes down, all of a sudden you're worrying big time, I think, about this offensive line right now. Now, we mentioned Turner is going to slot in and be that guy at least right here, right now, probably to begin the season. Don't sleep on Grant Bricks. Yes, I know he is a true freshman, just like Dylan Raiola. You don't want to lean on a bunch of true freshmen, man, having a true freshman left tackle and a true freshman quarterback. The future is now, or it could be now, certainly, um, in in Lincoln, Nebraska. But he is a four-star type of kid, top player in the state of Iowa, top 250 player according to all the recruiting services out there. He was a U.S. Army All-American Look, I'm not saying he's going to step in there against UTEP, those Colorado games, and play right away. But maybe don't be surprised if we get midway through the season. We get later in the season. He's able to learn a few things. Where And then maybe Turner is kind of the same guy we've seen the last few years. Don't be surprised if we see Grant Bricks maybe in that role midway through the season or towards the latter part of the season as well. This is an offensive line that has had issues in the past. This is certainly not something that Nebraska fans wanted to hear at this point in time. So I think the question mark about this Nebraska offensive line getting bigger now has a bigger microscope viewed on it. At least that's the way I'm viewing it right now. Dylan Raiola, is he going to be able to be protected consistently throughout this season? If he can, if the Nebraska offensive line can hold up, I feel good about the Huskers. But I think it is a pretty sizable question mark here right now. Let's shift from Lincoln, Nebraska over to Champaign, Illinois. You know, when you lose Isaiah Williams, when you lose Casey Washington, when you lose Tip Ryman at tight end, you need to go to the transfer portal to be able to fill in with some of these weapons. So Luke Altmaier, so you can help out Luke Altmaier a little bit to balance out this offense in the passing game just a little bit. Look, I really like what they did getting Zachary Franklin. Uh, that transfer there, a lot of people at that time weren't talking about Sakari Franklin. I don't think a lot of people even right now are talking about him right now, but he has a relationship in the offense with Barry Lenny Jr. in their days at UTSA. I think he's going to step in and be that role. Pat Bryant sliding over to the number two makes a lot of sense um, for me. Now, the guy coming in for Tip Ryman at tight end, Cole Rusk, or at least it was supposed to be Cole Rusk, but he suffered a season-ending injury in fall camp at tight end. He was a third-team FCS All-American over at Murray State last season, 507 yards and six touchdowns. Now the big question remains, what is this Illinois offense going to look like? What is the impact of losing a guy like Cole Rusk? Now, the thing about Cole that I really liked, and you're going to see the two parts of his game get split out kind of into two separate sets of guys right now for Illinois at tight end. I I really had a lot of confidence in, in, in him both as a blocker and as a receiving target down the field. Tip Ryman was solid, but I didn't really see him much as a downfield threat. I thought Cole Rusk and what he was able to put on film over at Murray State provided that downfield threat to be able to add to this passing game for the Illini. But now you don't have him. Now what is this Illinois offense going to look like? Well, when you take a look at the incumbents, when you take a look at who's coming back from last season at the tight end position for the Illinois Fighting Illini, you have to look at Tanner Arkin, first of all, and Henry Boyer. What do both of these guys have in common? They are more blockers than downfield threats. And we're talking, we need some downfield threats for this Illinois passing game. They are 265 and 270 pounds, respectively. They are those end line blockers. They are an extra tackle to really pound that run game. And that's where I really want to lead into my point and what maybe what Illinois is going to look like this season. When you look at the Illini, they've got a pretty good offensive line coming back. They've been able to backfill some holes with some really good transfers up front, including J.C. Davis, a top 10 offensive lineman in the country, according to Pro Football Focus. This is Burt Ball. This is Barry Ball, right, going back to pre-2006 at Wisconsin. I think this really feeds in to the identity 
that Brett Bielema has had in the past at some of his teams at both Illinois and then, of course, at Wisconsin, also in the Big Ten, where he was able to win three Big Ten championships. I think you can load up with personnel up front of the offensive line. You got a running back back there in Caden Fagan that is a downhill type of runner. He is a workhorse type of runner. He is that bell cow. He needs to stay healthy. If Caden Fagan does not stay healthy, Illinois could certainly run into, I think, a lot of troubles offensively uh, this season. But I see them with those two tight ends filling in for Cole Rusk. I could really see them pounding the rock. And we were talking about, I was talking with Sonny Verma from Locked on Illini in our preview. Maybe this team is going to open it up a little bit more. And I still think there is going to be a good amount of passing concepts within this offense. But now when I see this, I, it's really starting to, the puzzle pieces are starting to come together. The picture is starting to be clearer where this Illinois team could look a lot like the Brett Bielema teams in the past, and we just don't know what we're going to get out of Luke Altmaier. Okay, after Luke got hurt, John Paddock came in, and he had all that success pushing the football down the field. We just haven't seen that consistently game after game after game from Luke Altmaier. We saw it in the beginning of the season, his mobility, his ability to run around, but he didn't have that offensive passing explosion type of game like we saw John Paddock have a couple of times last season. So this team could be very physical and very reliant on the run game um, at the point of attack, that's for sure. Cole Rusk was one transfer, but they also brought in another transfer this year from the Division II ranks. I know Division II to Big Ten is about as big of a jump as you're going to see in the NCAA transfer portal. But watch out for Carson Goda. Okay, we talked about Arkin and Boyer maybe as one half of the skill set of Cole Rusk at the tight end position, that blocking threat more, that they're going to be involved more in the run game. But what about... Cole Rusk's downfield threat pass catching ability. I think that's maybe what you get here in Carson Goda. And he is certainly somebody to keep an eye on for Illinois going forward. Now that that position, that tight end, bigger body down the field spot is open. Somebody needs to fill that hole. Next man up. It is one of the most repeated phrases in football. And there's a good reason for it. It is a true statement 100% of the time. When somebody goes down, it's an opportunity for somebody to step in that role. I think when everybody was healthy, when Cole Rusk was healthy at the beginning of the season, Carson Goda was pretty far down the depth chart. Now there's an opportunity for him as a bigger body target down the field for Luke Altmaier. Now when I look at Carson Goda's film, he didn't really line up beside the tackle in a three-point stance a ton of time. He wasn't a traditional tight end. Now, I'm going to make this comparison next, but it's in body frame and position along the formation only. You look at Colston Loveland at Michigan, right? Now, he's a little bit taller. He's about 10 pounds heavier, but they line up in the slot. They line him up out wide. They line him up at the tra traditional tight end spot. They line him up all across the formation. When I look at Carson Goda's film, I see a lot of the same type of stuff. A lot of working out of the slot, a lot, a lot of taking advantage of the matchups. Is he fast enough to beat a safety or a linebacker? Is he big enough to go up against a nickel or a corner or somebody else that might be covering him in a certain situation, right? That's what you get out of those fast, agile, big type of targets, those tight ends that can line up in the slot, that can line up all across the formation. So it would not surprise me to see Carson Goda involved. I'm very intrigued to what this Illinois offense is going to look like this season. I could see them spreading out the formation with guys like Zachary Franklin, um, with, with a Pat Bryant, with a Malik Elzey, with maybe a Carson Goda in there as well. Spreading them out, hat on a hat and try to run the football up the middle, spread run game, or, of course, get the pass game involved to set up two tight ends, Arkin, Boyer, and just jam it down your throat. We'll see if Illinois can take advantage of multiple personnel packages to be able to create some momentum on offense. I want to hear what you guys think. Do you think the loss of Teddy Prohaska on the Nebraska offensive line is going to be big? There are questions along this Husker offensive line. Is that going to be detrimental 
to Dylan Raiola's development here in year number one. And what about Illinois? Can they get a bigger downfield threat? Is it going to be Carson Goda? Is it going to be somebody else? Leave all your thoughts in the comments below. I'm Big Ten Ted. We will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted, where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.